are looking at getting costs out of health care. And there are really three simple ways to do that. One is, uh, and I think Krautheimer had a, a piece on this yesterday, any reform, health care reform ought to have a piece on liability reform. This bill has nothing, the majority bill has nothing on liability reform. And we all know about the duplication in medicine. We've all had family members or friends or ourselves have been in the hospital and seen the extra tests and costs that are ordered simply because of defensive medicine. So we think some common sense reform in healthcare ought to be that. Secondly, we believe there should be regulatory reform and that is that small businesses and individuals ought to get the same kind of incentives that larger companies get when they can pool together and bring their costs down, whether that's uh, you know, getting health insurance in another state or having state compacts where states can pool together. And third, and I think you're going to hear from Jim on this later, is we think there should be a strong anti-fraud provision. We know there's a lot of fraud in Medicare and Medicaid. There's virtually nothing in this bill. When you look at the tabulation of the CBO scores and when they get to the fraud, anti-fraud provisions, there's literally zeros all the way across. We know it occurs. Uh, we've had no, a number of Inspector General reports on this. We, we beef up the Inspector General's office, frankly, in this area. And we know what happens with a lot of these folks. They commit fraud in one state and then they move to another one and do the same thing all over again. Um, and it's, there's not enough attention put on that. It's, it's a significant number uh, in savings that could be achieved. And I won't step on all of Jim's message. And lastly, I think the tax increases in this bill whether it's the um, individual mandate or the 8% uh, employer mandate, one of the things that we've discovered is, it, it, and that's why you just can't read this bill and skim it and think, oh gee, I know everything that's in it. But as you look at, at this bill, because the, um, the bill is written that um, once it's effective, employers will have, to, will have to pay, will have to not only have a certain kind of plan, that is defined by this health board and the health care commissioner, health choices commissioner, which will virtually end all in the, in the private insurance as we know it. They also, the employee will have to pay a certain percentage of the premium. And now what we found is that uh, about more than or up to 60% of small businesses will pay less than this threshold premium required. They're gonna require that a minimum of 72.5% of the health insurance premiums for individuals and 65% of the premium for families is paid for by the employer. So they're, they're upping the threshold on what employers must pay. Now it's a, it's a bit of a, you know, as you look at the bill and say, oh gee, there's a mandate, you need to look even a step further and say, not only is there a mandate, but for the family policies, they're going to they're going to actually um, affect up to 60 percent of policies. We'll then have to pay an 8 percent payroll tax on. So if the employer doesn't meet that threshold, there's an 8 percent payroll tax. You mentioned that um, the Obama health care plan is missing liability reform. How would you add that into an alternate plan? Well, I think it's important to have something in health care reform that will help physicians and providers who are practicing defensive medicine from ordering duplicate or additional tests. And I think we should look at a number of things. The health reform that we've seen in Texas and California, for example, I think is a good model. Uh, maybe adopting health courts, which would help with arbitration to get experts who understand health care issues to help resolve some of these issues. I think those are some of the ways that we could, we could help find a way to bring um, defensive medicine to an end.